In today's video, I'm going to show you how to paint a Black Eyed Susan in watercolor um, using the transparent technique. I had done several videos this week already on transparent eucalyptus leaves, and I believe it was yesterday that I did the cone flower. Um, so today I'm going to do a Black Eyed Susan. All right, so for the transparent uh, technique, it's really good, and I've said this on uh, my other videos. Um, if you use 100% cotton watercolor paper, I use arches. And for the, um, for the transparent technique, the hot press uh, watercolor paper is best. It just goes on a little bit softer. It's a little bit of a softer look. You could definitely do it on the cold press. It's just a little bit of a rougher look because the paper has a little bit more granulation to it. All right, so I've got um, a couple of different little dishes here that I'm gonna be using my paints. I'm gonna be putting in this one my cad yellow and yellow ochre. I'm gonna do a little bit of a mix. And this one here is gonna be my sap green um, and a little bit of my hooker's green. So I'm using those four paints for this painting. Um, and then later on for the actual um, little center here of the flower, I'm gonna be pulling in probably my Van Dyke brown and probably some black. So I'll let you know um, what I'm using as I'm going along. I also have my paintbrushes here, a size eight, 10, and six. These are my black velvet paintbrushes. I love them, and the paints that I'm using are uh, Windsor Newton. All right, so to get started, I'm gonna take my green here, and I had made uh, a green mix yesterday for my painting yesterday, so I'm just gonna go ahead and reactivate that. And I'll pull more paint on here if I need to, but. For right now, I think this is what I'm gonna be using. And then I'm gonna reactivate my yellows. And this one here, I think I need a little bit more. So I'm gonna be pulling in my, my cad yellow. And I'm gonna leave my yellow ochre out for right now. So I'm just gonna be pulling in my yellow, my cad yellow. Put a lot of water on there because you wanna make it transparent. So it's nice to have these little dishes. Um, I picked these up at a thrift store. I had said that yesterday. Um, and I don't know, they're like little baking dishes and it came in a set of six. So I have them for uh, six different colors, but you can pick up whatever you want. All right, so I already drew out my uh, Black Eyed Susan this morning and I'm gonna go ahead and just lighten up my lines. I'm using my kneaded eraser especially since it's the transparent um, technique, you kind of want to lighten up your lines because your paint is going to be going on pretty thin. All right. Okay. So I'm going to pick up my size 10. I'm going to dip it in my yellow wash. And now this technique is gonna be a little bit different from yesterday. Uh, with the comb flower, I just kept layering and layering and layering petals on top of petals. Today, the, comb, the Black Eyed Susans don't have that many petals, um, so they're not gonna be really layered, but they will be overlapping. So that's where I'm gonna get the transparent look, is by them overlapping, not really layering a ton of petals on top of each other. All right, so here again, you're gonna to wanna to do, just like yesterday, you're gonna to wanna to do every petal, but don't do them next to each other until the one next to it has dried already. So I'm gonna be doing this one. Then I'm gonna be picking up my actual. So this is my actual palette right here. So actually I'll just put this on the side here since I'm using my yellow. Um, and this was my cad yellow right here. So I'm gonna be going in I'm gonna make a little bit more of a mix, but this one's not as dilu diluted. And I'm just gonna come in on the edges of this petal. I want the middle to be a little bit more transparent, a little bit lighter. All right, I'm gonna wash off my brush and then I'm gonna pick up my yellow and I'm gonna come in with a crispier line. So this paint here is just damp. It's not really wet, it's not dilute, diluted. And you're gonna make a crispier line here. Okay. Beautiful. All right, wash off your brush. Go back to your wash. And I'm gonna skip this petal, but I'm gonna go ahead and do this petal. Be 
because where they overlap, the petals need to be, the first petals need to be dried completely or they will just bleed into each other. All right, I'm gonna pick up my mix, put in a little bit more yellow on my edges here. All right, get that filled in nicely. Wash off your brush, go back to your paint, get a good amount on there, and come in with a crispy line. Now on the yellow, it's not showing as well as it did on my mauve yesterday or my green for the eucalyptus. So what I think I'm going to do, because I do like my paintings to be a little bit more exaggerated, I think I'm gonna pick up my yellow or ochre right here, get that nice and wet, and let me see if that makes a little bit of a difference. Oh yes, look at that, huge. Now you can really see the difference. Now, if you liked it to be a little bit more subtle, then I would say just leave it as your cad yellow. But this yellow ochre is really making it pop. And all these little blooms that I'm getting right here are because I'm lifting up my brush. Every time I lift up my brush, I get a bloom. If you don't like those blooms, just try and do a nice straight line like that. No blooms right there. Um, if you do lift up your brush and you don't like the bloom, wash off your brush and just smooth it out right there. Just like that, just right on the edge. Your painting has to still be wet at this point to be able to do that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna smooth out this one. I do like the blooms on there. I think they're really pretty, but sometimes I like them to be a little bit softer. And if you find that you're puddling, you're puddling at the end of your little petals here, just take your brush and just swipe it back up. And that will clean up all that paint down at the bottom here. Unless you want it to dry nice and dark at the bottom. That's totally your call. All right, now I'm gonna go on to the next one. So I'm gonna skip the one next to this and I'm gonna go over here Get this one all nice and wet. All right, these two did touch a little bit. It's bleeding into each other. I did not mean to do that, but we'll see what happens. Go ahead, take a little bit of your mix, dab it on more towards the edges here. And then I am going to do my yellow ochre this time. I'm not even gonna bother with the cad yellow. I'm just using the tip of the brush. This one here, not as many blooms, see that? I just went over with one clean swipe. I like there to be blooms that I can smooth out. So I'm gonna go back in and I'm just gonna pounce my brush on there. Again, if you don't like all those blooms like this, which I love, but if you don't love it, just do one clean swipe. And if you get blooms, just go over it with a clean brush and smooth them out. Dab off on your paper towel or towel, whatever you have. And just kind of help the paint along. I'm gonna put a little bit more, I took off a little too much down here. So I'm gonna put a little bit more of my yellow ochre right there. And I think I'm gonna put a little bit in up here too. So you can always make some adjustments. If you feel like you took off a little bit too much paint, add a little bit more. If you feel like you added too much paint, just take off a little bit more um, with a nice clean brush. Now see this bloom here, how I said they touched and I didn't want them to touch at the beginning. This is what's happening. It's starting to get a bloom right here and I'm not happy with that. I usually love the blooms, but this one I am not happy with. So I'm gonna go right back over it with just a clean brush and I'm gonna clean that up a little bit. I'm gonna keep my eye on that. If it happens again, I'm gonna clean it off again. All right, so we're gonna skip this one and we're gonna do this one. Look at all those, beautiful. All right, wash off my brush and smooth it out. You can go from the bottom up or the top down, it doesn't matter. 
just smooth it out before it dries. That's that's the key. You do not want this to dry because then it will be tougher to get those little blooms smoothed out. That's why I'm doing one petal at a time. You really want to concentrate on each petal individually before you, because you could go and do all the first layer of all the, you know, of, of the petals, um, but then you might have to go in and, and wet them again later on because these nice little blooms won't show up if your petal is dry. So that's why I do each petal at a time, one at a time. All right, that is really pretty. And you can go in and just still play around with it as long as it's wet, you can still play around with it. All right, so all that's left to do is one, two, three, four more petals, but they are overlapping. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna dry this first and then we're gonna do those petals. Yeah. Okay, so now this is nice and dry. I did wanna mention one more thing. So I let these dry naturally because I was doing them in order. This was my last one. See how I kind of forced it to dry with my heat gun? Um, it didn't turn out as beautifully as these. Sometimes just letting your painting, if you have the time, let your painting dry naturally. It just starts to absorb, it does its thing, it looks beautiful, soft. If you start to force it to dry, like I did with this one, because this was my last one, um, it just doesn't look as natural and as pretty. So I might have to go over this one again. See how it's just so beautiful on the outlines here? This one didn't really do that. This edge here needed more time to dry and blend. So that's why it just doesn't look as pretty. And this one down here, for some reason, just lightened up a little bit. Um, maybe that was my fault and I didn't do as many blooms down here. I'm not really sure, but I'm not really happy with how this looks because I forced it to dry. All right, we're gonna deal with that later. Let's go ahead and do our other ones. So I'm gonna start over here. And I have a petal right in between these and it's going over this one, going over this one, and then it just comes down to the bottom here. All right, I'm gonna go over it, put some of my yellow ochre on here again. And this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually go over. I see that there's a little bit more yellow. I don't know if you remember, but I had done this in my yellow outline first before I did the um, yellow ochre. I did it in the cad yellow, I'm sorry, before I did it in the yellow ochre. And there's a little bit more of a hint here of yellow than there is in the two that I didn't do the yellow, uh, the cad yellow. So I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna do that again. I think that outline of the cad yellow, even though it wasn't showing up as nicely as I liked, I think it really added to my petal here. Now be careful where they're overlapping because you had this nice crisp line on these two petals here. And if you keep playing around with the paint, you're gonna lose that. Um, and you might have to go back in and put it back in. Now, if you wanted to switch down to a smaller size brush, you definitely can. I could have used my eight or my six for this. Um, I'm sticking with my 10. I'm pretty comfortable with how much paint the tip holds, how much water it holds. Um, the point is beautiful on these brushes. So it just depends on what brush you're using. Um, if you're not using, this is a really good brush, um, but if you're not using a really great quality brush, you might need to move down a size, which is totally fine, totally fine. So just because I'm using the number 10 brush doesn't mean you have to. All right, that looks really pretty. I'm gonna go ahead and dry this and then we're just gonna go in and we're gonna exaggerate our little areas that are overlapping. And I might fix this little guy that I was not happy with before. So I might go ahead and fix him. All right, so just make sure your painting is nice and dry. And the reason I am using this side of my hand is there's less oils on this side of your hand than there is this side. So try not to um, touch your painting with your fingertips. You may not feel like they're oily, but there is definitely oil on there. So, and you don't want that to go on your paper because then your paint will not absorb correctly. All right, uh, let's see here. I might just go over it with my wash. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow ochre to my wash now that we're going over these areas. And I'm still using my 10. And I'm just going over the areas that 
are overlapping because I'm just going to exaggerate these areas a little bit more. If you don't want to do this step, you don't have to. If you like the natural, nice, very subtle look, excellent. Don't do this step. And I know if these are transparent flowers, you'd be actually seeing the petals on the other side of the flower as well. All these that are back here, because there are petals back here, you would be seeing them come through as well. I'm gonna save that for another day. I'm not gonna confuse you at this point. So just leave it like that, because then it starts getting really confusing uh, where this petal is, then it goes right through, and then you see it on this side, and it's a really pretty look as well, um, but this is just a little bit more of a simple look. It is really, really pretty. All right, let's go ahead and put the center on and then we'll do our greens. Okay, for the center, I don't think I made a mix in my, uh, we'll just go ahead and clean this one out really quick. So I wanted, actually, you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little bit of brown on this because it's gonna be kind of an orangey brown anyways. I'm gonna take my Van Dyke Brown. Where is that on my palette? I think it's this one. And I'm just gonna make a nice wash right in there. Okay. Make sure that's all dry that we just did. And I'm gonna go in just with a nice little wash here. And just pop in my center. I'm still using my number 10. I guess I'm pretty comfortable with it. And I'm dragging my paint down towards the bottom of that little cone. This is the cone where all the little seeds are. And I'm just dragging it down because I want it to be a little bit darker down here. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and dry that. We're gonna put another little layer on. Okay, so let me show you something. Here again, see where I forced it to dry? See that bloom right there? You see a difference of the paint here and here? If I would have let it dry naturally, that wouldn't have happened. Um, so if I wasn't videotaping this, I probably would have just let that go and do its thing, but I didn't. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put another little layer on just with the same mix. I want to get it a little bit darker down here, kind of blend it up a little bit. And this could be a little bit of a harsher line because it is going to be um, a really nice dark center. I'm going to be adding a lot on here. So I think I'm just going to leave it like that for right now. All right, this time I think I'm just going to let it do its thing. All right, I'm gonna move on to the greenery. All right, so I've got my hookers green and a little sap green in here. Let me just go ahead and make this wash. All right, get it all nice and reactivated because I used it from yesterday. That's the beauty of watercolor. You just reactivate it. You're not wasting a lot of paint. With acrylics, I usually end up wasting a lot of paint because whatever's left on my palette if I can scrape it off, great, but if I can't scrape it off, then I just have to take it off and throw it away. Uh, but with watercolors, it's beautiful. You just reactivate it. All right, since this is see-through, I'm going to be seeing the green go right through here, okay? So this is my stem, but the petals are translucent. Drag your whole arm down, okay? If you were just to drag your wrist down like this, you're gonna start curving off the page like this because this is what your wrist just wants to do, okay? It's like a little compass. You have to move your whole arm down the page. Move your whole arm just steady. See that? And then you get a pretty straight line, all right? I am gonna go ahead and do a nice wash for my leaves. I don't know if you can see, but I've got one here and two overlapping there. I'll do this one first. All right, go in, put a little bit more. I'm just pouncing it. 
went outside of my lines there a little bit. Oops, fix that up. We'll just give it a little bit of a chubbier leaf. All right, go ahead and drag off some of that paint so you don't have that much there. Mostly in the middle. You wanna leave that nice little outline there. I'm going in and I'm picking up my hooker's green just with the tip. Got a little too much water on my brush. You dab some of that off. And then I'm gonna go in with a little bit of a crispier line. Do the other side. This side's working a little bit better. I dried off my brush a little bit more. See how it's not as blooming? You don't get all these little web looking things. It's just a little bit crispier. So try not to have too much water in your brush for this, this uh, part right here. Beautiful. All right, go ahead, wash off your brush. Smooth out your little blooms here. Just move them around. Try to stay mostly on the edge. Nothing really in the middle. You want the middle to be a little bit lighter. All right, that's beautiful. All right, these two are overlapping, so I'm not gonna do that one yet. So let's go over here. Let's do this one. I should have probably lightened up my line a little bit on this one, but that's okay. I can still see my pencil marks in there, but maybe once we do the crisp crispness on the edge, it'll go away. You won't see it. All right, looking good. Wash off your brush, dry it really good. Pick up your green and just go on the edge here. Oh, I want some blooms, so I'm going to start lifting up my brush like that. All right, I didn't lift up my brush too much on this point, so I'm going to go back in and put some little blooms. Do the other side. Now see how my leaf, I don't think I put enough water on there. See how I'm getting this dry spot? It's starting to dry really fast in the middle. I'm getting that shape right there. What you could do if you start getting that, go in with just a clean brush and reactivate it. So it all bleeds nicely together. And that should help it a little bit. All right, um, I'm gonna go ahead and dry this one because now I gotta do that leaf. All right, go in with my mixture. Here again, see, we're getting that. I must have not added enough water there again. I'll fix that in a minute. Or you could just leave it. It does add more texture to your leaves. Could be a pretty thing. Just experiment if you like it or not. Maybe you want to start doing it on purpose. All right, I'm going to go in and just try and blend some of this out. There. All right, and I'm gonna pop in my little stems. One. There. All right, I am gonna go in and just kind of darken up my stem here a little bit so it bleeds into my, my the stems of the leaves. There's the main stem and then there's the little leaf stems. You want them all to blend into each other. You don't want it to just look like they're just little sticks on there. <laughs> Would look really funny. So just kind of soften it up a little bit. Okay. If you feel like you want to go in and darken up the rest of the stem, you could do that too. But I'm going to leave mine nice and light. Um, I am going to go in and pop in some um, veining, but I'm going to do that in a minute. Let's go back to this cone. All right, I'm gonna deepen it up again. And actually, I'm gonna pull in a little bit more of my paint rather than the mixture that I made with all my water here. I really wanna deepen this up. 
Now, if you feel like you wanna to move to a smaller brush, again, go for it. And I think I'm gonna even add in a little bit of my black. There we go. I'm just pouncing it in like the little end here. That will definitely do the trick. Perfect. All right. I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to start popping in my leaves here. Or I'm sorry, the stem, the veining on the leaves. <clears throat> so let me get this out of the way. I'm going to turn this a little bit. Just turn your page so you can get a nice, even, you know, a nice flow with your hand here. Um, this one's dry. Make sure your leaves are dry. I'm going over it with just a little bit of the mix. I don't want them to be too dark. So it's very watered down paint. Make all your little, all your little veining. All right. This one is still wet. I'm going to go ahead and dry this one really quick because he is still wet. Okay, turn my page, get that mixture, that water mixture on my brush, use just the tip, and do all your little veining. It's really subtle. You don't want this to be really dark veins. You could always darken up some of it. I'll show you how I do that. I go in with just a little bit more and I just kind of sometimes just let it bleed. If they're still wet, just let it bleed a little bit. Like that, all right? It just kind of crispens up and darkens up a little bit. I usually just do the ones closest to the stem. I don't really get dark up at the tip up here. It just doesn't look right. All right, let's do this one. So this one's gonna be flowing more this way. All right, let that dry naturally, and I'm going to go back in. That is dry. I'm going to switch brushes this time. I'm going to go to my size 6, and I'm going to take my Van Dyke Brown. And it's got all these little, it's not as pointy and um, prickly as the cone of the cone flower that we did yesterday. This one's a little bit softer, but here again, it does have all these little all this little texture in here. So I'm going in very lightly and I'm just flicking my brush out, okay? I'm hoping you can see this on video because it's really, really light. It just gave it a little bit of a fuzzy look on this side, all right? Go ahead, pick up your paint again. And I always start from the bottom because that's the first couple strokes have the most paint. You want it to be darker on the bottom. All right, and then you can always add a little more if you feel like it needs more. And you don't even need to go over the dark spots if you don't want to. But if you do want to, just go in with a little bit of a darker paint so it shows up. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you want more videos like this one. And you can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Have a great day. Bye.